Hey, this is Skin.net. My name is Terrell. My name is Aaron. And today we're going to do some chair stripping. And by that I mean we're going to strip down old dumpster chairs, reupholster them, stain them, and sand them in between. Not in that order. Not in that order. But a lot of chair stripping. Enjoy. So the first thing that she starts off with is she has to take all of the old junk off of the chair. So she's taking out the tacks and then she's also taking out the uh, lining around the side. Um, there's a bunch of little pins and everything in there and it doesn't really matter what you're doing because uh, obviously most of this stuff is going to be replaced. Make sure that you keep the top part so that you can use it as a pattern for the new upholstery. What she's doing right now is showing you that we have 150 grit sandpaper that we're going to use to sand down the chair. So basically starting with the legs, just sounding down uh, all of it. The whole point of this is, is basically to uh, take the varnish off and make it so that you can actually get uh, the stain to go into the wood. Yeah, you don't need to scratch it all off, you just need to scratch it up enough that the stain can get in there. That is some fast sanding. I'm good. Yeah, I don't just want, I mean, the sanding, the sand, okay, what else do I have to explain? Sand the whole thing, sand it hard, sand it real hard. Don't sand it so hard that you take the wood off. Yeah, gotta leave the wood. So after you got it sanded, you got it all dusty and nasty, and that'll basically leave little flecks on there. Um, if you stain over that, it's just gonna leave little spots. We kept the original um, padding in the seats because it was horse hair because they're really old, so we just Lysoled it down and started staining. For staining, you want to make sure you have gloves. We were cheap, so we only bought one pair, so each one of us have one glove on each of our hands. And then we just basically took some microfiber cloths that we had and dipped them in the stain and then just basically rub it all over. When you're done, let it dry and wipe off the excess. Um, As you can see, it comes out pretty nice. I wanted to make the chairs puffier, so I was gonna add extra. This is a, some kind of cotton quilting fabric. Um, so I just cut out a square to add it to the middle. That's the actual size of the chair. Um, just put that, and then I made a third layer to wrap around and hold that all in place, um, just to make them fluffier. And so this one's way too big. Uh, I didn't measure it, I'm just estimating it, and then just cutting the excess around and wrapping it and stapling it underneath. So now she's basically just cutting the hole or a little slit in it that's about the same size as the little rods that are going down for the chairs. Uh, it doesn't have to be precise either because the stuff is stretchy, so. Yeah, just gotta get it close. Um, and then basically you just take it and you staple it to the bottom of the chair. It's pretty easy like that. Um, and since it is stretchy, it has a lot of give. You don't really have to be that exact. Right there, she's showing you that basically she's lining it up with the... Uh, where the actual chair leg starts. Yeah, basically where it's finished uh, from the staining. That way the padding doesn't like leak out under it. Yeah. Basically flush. And then now this just... You know, again, it's not precise. You don't want to stretch it too much, but just cut out the excess so that it's not lumpy underneath the upholstery. Yeah, because that's the place where you're folding it over. So if you put too much there, you're going to have a huge pillow on the side. It'll look kind of ridiculous. But she does a really good job, gets it all there, and just staples it down. And it's all the same on every side. It's just sometimes you're going to have to do little adjustments like here on the back here, just to make sure that you don't have too much fluff. You don't want it sticking out, so you're going to have to deal with that later when you're actually putting the uh, last piece on. Okay, so then that original top piece, um, just put it over, cut out a rough estimate of about how big it is. Again, you're going to have excess, but you don't want to sit there and measure all those little things. Because like in this case, um, the upholstery that we took off is super canvassy, and we have this vinyl stuff that has a little bit of give. So I made it a little bigger so that we could stretch it under. Because, you know, as people sit in it, it's going to give and crack if it's not pulled nice and tight. Again, just like the stuffing, uh, she's just cutting a little slit in it that's about the size or a little bit bigger than the posts that are on top of the chair or on top of the legs. 
and this is just again it doesn't have to be super exact because this is a stretchy material so she can actually compensate for messing up later and generally her rule of thumb is is that she you see her cut it several times because she cuts it small and then goes back and cuts in little bits to it to get it to fit there that's how you don't have to be super precise the first round just cut and then cut again and then cut again until you get it where you want it as you can see right there yeah on this part also you want to complete one side before you move on to another like don't go around and cut all the posts um, because again since the material's got a little bit of give if you cut all the posts and then actually go to stretch it around the chair it's not going to line up so now as you're actually tacking you want to go ahead and roll um, the edge under so you don't see the unfinished edge and then pull it tight up against those posts so that you don't see the stuffing between the posts and the chair. Before you go down the middle, cut these little darts in it. It's the same as how you dart fabric for a seam. Just cut a little triangle shape out and that'll just keep it from puckering when you wrap it under. Um, makes it easier to do it smooth. I don't know if everyone knows what puckering and... If you don't know what puckering is, get lost. Maybe they think it's a way of making jam. Puckers jam. Really? I've never, just never heard that term with jam. You've never had puckers jam before? It's smuckers. Yeah, you're right. That's totally a alcohol my bad puckers apple <laughs> that's a apple chick puckers. alcohol too what the hell no it's a mixer no it's a chick drink so staple that all in place and do your darts those three sides are the same the front is where you run into the trouble um this particular chair. Front, you need a particular skill set. Or a second set of hands. Or, or a, a friend. Or, no. If you've got four hands, you don't need a friend. Goro, I needed a friend. Goro can do this chair, no problem. Okay, so first I wrapped around the side, and you want to make sure that the bottom is flush even with the top of the finish on the chair, because you don't want a gap. Like on this where the leg is finished and then where it drops off to where the upholstery is, there's a huge difference in the quality of the material. So I just rolled it under, stapled it on the front, because in this case I wrapped it around the front and then the top is going to come and cover that. So again, here's where you know measuring might have saved me a little extra material, but I feel like it's quicker and easier this way and I don't really care about measuring. And just cutting off the excess and then I'm just gonna roll it and make sure that the corner reaches perfectly so it's at a 90 degree angle right at the corner of where we want it any excess you can cut out without it showing is just gonna make it lay a lot smoother so that you don't see that extra material bunched up underneath As you can see, her cutting out as much as she can. Yeah, these are those areas in that um, where you saw me cut just a big square instead of cutting around all the edges. Those were probably some of the areas that were cut out that I figured I would just compensate for later. So my big stupid head's in the way, but all we're doing is pulling it tight to the corner. I'm holding it tight while he tacks in a uh, furniture tack because obviously you can't staple on the front of this. And since the leg is there, you can't wrap it under and staple it underneath. And then for us, we're just going to put furniture tacks around the whole thing to make it look all fancy. So we're just measuring how far up and how far away from the corner they are. But we went with uh, one centimeter up and one centimeter over for these first tacks. For right here, you can see we're just tacking on the front. And my head's not in the way on this one, so you can actually see how I'm cutting the extra material out. And you can see where the top of the finished chair is, where you want to roll it over and pull it into the corner. 
So just make sure all the unfinished edges are rolled in. And then here's where he was saying he's just measuring centimeter in, centimeter up, and then evenly spaced on the rest of them. But for right here, those things are impossible to tack in by yourself while you're holding it tight. So this is why I said you need a friend. Clamps might be a good idea. How are you gonna clamp that? It's a, it's a flat edge. Um, it's a 90 degree angle. You'd have to have a clamp that could reach the front all the way to the back of the chair. Or just make a friend. <laughs> It'd be easier for most people to do that. During this part, we're measuring it to see how many it is, and then we're going to do this little skill called division. And find out how much uh, tacks are. To see how many it is. How many How many centimeters? How many tacks you need to put in <laughs> to evenly space them. In this particular case, we ended up just needing to do five centimeters, which is what we wanted to do. Uh, so measure that it's a millimeter up and five centimeters away from the center of the tack. You can set it however you want. I mean, that's how it's going to work. Yeah, I would recommend also do the ones on the side and work your way to the middle instead of going straight across because that way you can compensate for any, you know, space. And that's what he did on this side. That way, if you are off by like a centimeter by the time you get to the center, you can just make sure that you space them out. And then you've got your finished chair. Looks great. Next to a tennis ball. With random dogs walking around because... Because... Thanks for watching. Again, this is theskim.net, and if you like the video, just subscribe below, as well as you can go to skim.net, get it, to see all the videos. We do cosplay as well as some furniture every now and then for some reason. We just like to make stuff. Yeah. Also below, there's Twitter, so you can tweet at us, and Facebook, so you can face at us. And Instagram and Tumblr and... No, we're not linking any of that stuff. Don't no, we have a no one cares about that stuff. <laughs> Why do we have a Thanks Pinterest? for watching. Bye. Why do we have a Pinterest? <laughs> I don't know.